Four people are taken into custody following a drug raid in Laddie Heights. Plus, it's been delayed for several years and Simon Sanchez High students are tired of the waiting game. And the outlook for Guam's economy, Nestor Laconto has details from today's Bank of Guam Spring Economic Summit. Hafre and good evening. Suspected drug activity led uniform officers with the Mandania Drug Task Force to a home in Laddie Heights. The home in Dededo on Thursday. Court documents state Walter came home and started an argument with one of the victims. That's when she started swinging the umbrella at the older victim, hitting her in the head. She then allegedly went after the second victim with a knife, cutting her in the arm. No serious injuries were reported. He is accused of pocketing customer payments and fraudulently using another customer's credit card. 27 year old Marvin. So much when the verdict was read, they were asked to leave the courtroom. I feel that women's lives matter, that modern culture now is actually being mirrored by the justice system. 80-year-old Cosby, who was stoic as he learned his fate, called the district attorney an a-hole after Steele fought to revoke Cosby's million-dollar bail. I think everybody got to see who he really is. The defense team plans to appeal. We don't think Mr. Cosby is guilty of anything. And the fight is not over. Cosby surrendered his passport and returned home awaiting a sentencing hearing. Each charge carries a maximum of 10 years in prison. Back to news here at home. They're hoping to get the tools to sniff out contraband before it makes its way into the prison. The Department of Correction says efforts are underway to establish a canine unit of their own. Here's DOC Director Tony Lamarena. We're looking at applying for federal grants for it, but what we've done is uh, we've actually gotten into an MOU with Customs. They, the, they will be training four of our officers so that uh, if the dogs are available, and uh, we can actually take their dogs and, and do sweeps of the compa so that we don't uh, increase their overtime for their staff. So uh, the MOU has been signed. I think the training should be starting shortly. Uh, for our officers to handle their dogs. As recent as last week, Guam Customs in quarantine was on the compound to conduct a sweep. The effort is part of Operation Green Vigilance. A bill to impose an immediate tax on short-term vacation rentals now awaits voting. It allows the Department of Revenue Tax to start collecting an 11% excess tax on these establishments, just like the taxes paid by hotels, bed and breakfasts, and other companies that charge for accommodations. Bill sponsored Vice Speaker Therese Terlahi. This bill is meant to assist the Department of Revenue Tax in moving forward with the collection of these taxes. It's my understanding that the current law is clear enough for the Department of Revenue and Taxation to issue applications for certifications, certificates, and reporting forms for short-term vacation rentals without the need for additional rules and regulations at this time. GVB supports the bill as an important step in leveling the playing field for the tourist accommodations. The tax is projected to bring in about $3.6 million in new revenue. Debate may be over on a bill that, if passed, would give DOE sole leadership over the procurement process of Simon Sanchez High School. But that didn't stop students from holding a rally Friday at the home of the Sharks. Carmen Chalahi has the story. Listing every senator by name, 
Sydney Flores, a junior, wants leaders to vote yes on Bill 204. It's not the first time students at the home of the Sharks took to rallying to get their school rebuilt. This time for a bill that if passed will transfer the authority of the procurement process from Department of Public Works to the Department of Education after multiple appeals and protests have delayed plans to rebuild the school promised seven years ago. Casey San Jose and Sydney Flores, both juniors, say students coordinated the event because they have hope in Superintendent John Fernandez. In all honesty, if we can't trust in him, who can we trust in? We're turning away from these agencies who fail us, and we are turning towards our superintendent who support us. He's here, he's here, fighting very hard to get the story built. Students here at the home of the Sharks have placed their confidence in this bill, hoping Superintendent John Fernandez holds true to his promise to rebuild this school. Today I got goosebumps, um, so I'll take the pressure on, I'll take the responsibility on. You know, I'm taking a big risk, you know, if I fail, I'm going to fail in front of all my, my kids and all of my teachers, but um, because they have the faith in me, I've got to do my best to step up to that challenge. This rally was held after three days of senators questioning the head of DOE. I've seen that uh, not, all, not, not every senator is supportive of that. Uh, and I was shocked that I know, I know Vice Speaker Talahi uh, didn't seem to support that. I think the bill's improved over that, over, throughout that debate. I hope that we can regain the confidence of our senators who, have, uh, who, who doubt uh, our capabilities. The bill is expected to be put to a vote next week. The superintendent says his plan is to get the design process started by the beginning of next school year. Reporting for Guamzi's Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Turlahi. Finding enough workers for the emerging construction boom will be critical to Guam's economic growth. That was one of the key points raised by Chief Economist Joe Bradley at the Bank of Guam's Spring Economic Sunday today. Summit, summit today. That's the Conta reports. Our outlook is pretty much the same, but what we're seeing with, we're, we're missing a wave of construction activity because we don't have construction workers. And what we're seeing is that our housing stock is aging. Our commercial buildings are aging, and eventually they get to the point where they are fully depreciated in an economic sense, not just in an accounting sense, which means if they're fully depreciated in an economic sense, they're worthless. Bradley says that's why Guam really needs to replace old buildings and homes and add new ones. And we've got a growing population that can fuel the demand. The cycle is based upon construction activity. We get investment from the outside, both from uh, the federal government and from um, private investors, predominantly Asian, and that comes in waves. That creates our business cycle, and so constru construction activity rises, and then it falls. Historically, Guam has not had a large enough local worker base to meet construction needs, especially during boom times. Bradley says that's why resolving the foreign labor issue remains so critical. And if we train enough people locally for the peak, then they move away during the next decline, and they're not here in preparation for the next peak. So we have to train a whole new group of people, and you know, it's kind of lather, rinse, repeat. It's the same thing over and over and over again. Congress has acknowledged that we don't have enough construction workers, but Citizenship and Immigration Service seems to be balking at the idea. Uh, they don't think the jobs are temporary. Well, once the building is built, the job is over. A recent defense spending bill authorized up to 4,000 foreign workers a year for Guam, and USCIS recently approved hundreds of applications for military-specific projects. Local leaders, though, are still fighting to have similar authorizations extended for civilian projects. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. Well, stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience KUAM News than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. All available now from the App Store. Half the day, I'm in the club. Half the day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half the day, I'm in the club.
In this divided world, there are still things that unite us. Great music, thrilling games, and the love for that perfect burger. Ruby Tuesday Guam, for the love of burgers menu. For a limited time, get an amazing burger for just $11.99. Lunchtime at Ruby Tuesday Guam. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News. Giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats. And via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. Welcome back. A historic moment after North Korean leader Kim Jong-un crossed on foot into South Korea at the demilitarized zone today for talks with South Korean President Moon Jae-in. Kim is the first North Korean leader to be in the southern section of the border since the end of the Korean War in the early 1950s. Moon greeted Kim after he crossed the concrete slabs that the, formed the rival's military decarmation zone. De Carmation Line. The meeting also comprised of both leaders planting a commemorative tree before inspecting a South Korean honor guard together. Gov Guam and Joint Region Marianas are strengthening the One Guam approach after both federal and local agency agencies participated in a ballistic missile exercise earlier this week. One of several ongoing One Guam efforts, the exercise was intended to increase readiness and cooperation between federal and local partners in the event of a crisis. And after its completion, both entities evaluated their performance and established an improved baseline to further strengthen island-wide collaboration and coordination. Some of the partners involved include the offices of Home, Guam Homeland Security and Civil Defense, Joint Region Marianas, U.S. Naval Base Guam, and Anderson Air Force Base. The House Armed Services Committee Subcommittee on Readiness has marked up the readiness portion of the NDAA for FY 2019. Congresswoman Madeline Perdalio says the readiness mark includes provisions important to Guam. It includes a provision that requires the Secretary of the Navy to establish, maintain, and regularly update a publicly accessible inventory of real property on Guam administered by the Navy. It also establishes a former mechanism for the governor to petition the secretary to add specific parcels to that inventory. Congresswoman Mandalio sponsored the provision. You can read more on this story on KUAM.com. The first law day was declared 61 years ago. The three branches of government coming together with some of the island's youth to declare Law Week and Law Day. A special ceremony was held at the Guam Congress building where proclamations and resolutions were presented. The celebration includes an array of events that starts tonight with the Law Street Fair at the Guam Museum and the Guam Congress building. Law Week is April 29th to May 5th. The entire 8th grade class from FBLG Middle School took the Hoffa Day Pledge with their Wave Club representatives taking the lead. The Tourism Education Council was holding a mini expo for them and the Hoffa Day Pledge signing was part of their program for the morning. The expo and signing was held in their school gym. For 53 years, they've supported the island's only public hospital. And today, the Guam Memorial Hospital Volunteers Association took time to celebrate their own. A recognition and awards ceremony was held at the Hyatt Regency Guam. Receiving lifetime service awards were Yu Ri Kim, Nancy Lee, Virginia Leon Guerrero, Jan Maravilla, and Alfonsina Payne. Myrna Aquino received this year's top honors as the Volunteer of the Year. The group is better known as the Pink Ladies because of their pink vests. They operate the hospital's gift shop and work all year long to fundraise for the Guam Memorial Hospital in order to purchase medical equipment, hospital furnishings, and other supplies. Great job. Congrats to all the recipients. Well, sports is next, but first, here's your item one. Supercell event. Enjoy huge savings on our most popular Samsung Galaxy smartphones. But this offer won't last long. So drop into a GTA store today.
Ooh, what do we have here? Tender morsels of deliciousness. Wait, back that up. I see you, you little golden brown temptresses. And oh, all that juicy goodness. Wait, 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 is that a new sauce? Where are my car keys? I'm on my way, Mickey D's. Introducing McDonald's new Buttermilk Crispy Tenders. Juicy and breaded to perfection. Hurry in and get four for you or ten to share. That's right. My tender game just got an upgrade. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. It's Friday, so you know how we do it every Friday. We head on down to Deddy Doe for our direct zone. Athlete of the Week. Check it out. We're here at Dar Rentone, Deddy Doe for our Athlete of the Week. Today we have local spear fisherman James Borja. Matt? Congratulations on being Dar Rentone's Athlete of the Week. Who would you like to present the check to? Uh, thank you. I'd like to donate this check to Notre Dame High School's Morgan Chrysostomo Endowment Foundation. Now, Guam was well represented in the Inter-Pacific Spearfishing Championships. We had a men's and a women's team. Uh, tell us a little bit about the event. Okay, yeah. so the Inter-Pacific Championships has been around for over 30 years. Um, several years ago, Guam became a core member. We've been competing every year since 2012. Um, we did have a women and men's team. Uh, this year was myself, Todd Jenneru, Chase Weir, Vince Pangalinen, with our managers, Ken Borja. And um, our women's team was Monique Jenneru and Rachel Jordan. And uh, Guam placed third but let's talk about the format uh, for the spear fishing event itself all right so um, the event it's a two-day event over a, a six-hour period it's a swim meet so we we all start in a, a center point of a, a selected zone which is about five kilometers and from there we swim for six hours targeting um, species or fish that uh, are selected and of course there are minimum requirements and um, and um, bag limits as well so with Guam's uh, good showing, a little bit behind Tahiti for uh, third place, what does this do for the spearfishing uh, team in general? Well, it, you know, it gives us more exposure, and um, as far as our regional events, uh, this is the best we've done um, in, the, in the last several years. We're now, we placed thirds the first time to be up on the podium. Um, the first day we, we beat out um, Tahiti, which is a, a very good accomplishment for us, and then we were just edged out on the second day, finishing third. But um, for us, it, it, it makes us stronger being out, being able to go to these events, and of course, we compete every four years in the Micronesian Games. Our, our next event will be the Micronesian Games in Yap which is taking place in July. So it, it builds our confidence, builds our, you know, our knowledge base, as well as um, our, our, what we, we tend to do as far as spear fishermen and, and, and what we, who we compete against and what we target. All right, congratulations. Stay tuned to our next Dar Rents Home Athlete of the Week. KUAM Sports Athlete of the Week is brought to you by... FSAC Basketball in the Junior Division. Inland Builders taking on EICS. Francis Benitez with the rebound. Long pass down court to Alan Asun, who gives it up to teammate Lerico Salvador for the basket in the lane. Salvador led all scorers with 28 points. EICS player Paukanit follows up on the block shot by Benitez and puts it up before Benitez thinks about stuffing his shot attempt. Francis with another rebound and dished down the other way. Gino Solik with the ball goes up with the left-handed shot. He finished the game with 14 points. Inland Builders picked up the double-digit win over EICS, 96-60. Dowell put up 25 points. Dickerson added 22 in the loss for EICS. Guam's national men's golf team will be competing in the 2018 MPI Generali Sawana Amateur Championship in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia on May 2nd through the 4th. The team leaves tomorrow to compete in the prestigious international golf event. The tournament will be conducted at the famous Sawana Golf and Country Club, a course that's rated as one of the most challenging golf courses in Malaysia. Representing Guam will be veteran golfers Vic Borja, Darrell Poe, Brent Salas, and Reg Camacho. They were selected based on Guam National Golf Team standings. Following the recent three-day ranking events, they will be competing against Asia's top amateur golfers. Well, that's going to do it for sports. We're back right after this. In this divided world, there are still things that unite us. Great music, thrilling games, and the love for that perfect burger. Ruby Tuesday Guam, for the love of burgers menu. For a limited time, get an amazing burger for just $11.99. Lunchtime at Ruby Tuesday Guam. 
We're celebrating our 135th anniversary today, both in the outlying regions on which we hub and also here in Guam itself. It means so much to our team here in Guam. It means a lot to us in the Matson management team because what it says is we're here to stay. It's a real physical manifestation of our commitment to this region. It's so important that we hire locally, we develop talent locally, we train locally. What's been a wonderful addition to our approach there is that many of the people who started off in Guam have gone off into significant leadership roles elsewhere in the company. This is our headquarters here in Guam in Micronesia. And when we talk about putting down our roots, it's not just doing business, it's about everything we do with our friends, our customers, and our employees. I believe that nobody can replicate what we do, and that's why we have such a great team and such a great service and why we're successful. This is our home, this is our life, and we're happy to make a difference in everyone else's life. Summer's right around the corner, but first shift into spring with Triple J. With zero down, 1.9% financing, and easy trade-in, now is the time to buy. Get into our big boy truck, the Ford F-150, starting at $217 per paycheck. Car and driver's 10 best, Mazda CX-9 at $242 per paycheck. The Mazda 3 sedan at only $137 per paycheck. Or the North American Car of the Year, the 2018 Honda Accord at only $216 per paycheck. Visit us online at TripleJGuam.com and get pre-approved instantly. Some conditions apply. See dealer for details. Triple J Auto Group. Customers first. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy ninth birthday, Amaya Nicole Kichichu. Amaya, this coming from Daddy, Mommy, Hannah, and Tori. We love you. Amaya is awesome. Joe Kichichu, happy 48th birthday, Joe. We love you so much, Daddy. Love Hannah, Amaya, and Tori. Also, happy birthday, Justice J.C. Pangolinan. And a happy birthday, Norman McGlotnia Cruz. Also, a very special happy birthday to KUAM kid, Curtis Aiden Delgado. Happy birthday. We love you. Yeah. Happy birthday again to Curtis. Yeah, he turns kid. 10. I guess what he wants out of everything. What? Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, not my favorite. And Cold Stone Creamery Birthday of Cake. Of course. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include your photo, your name, and birth date so we can celebrate you and it's our favorite time of the week. Woo -woo. Time to announce the winner of this week's Yummy Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Cake. And this week's winner is... Chloe Jade Sizing Fong. Her birthday was on April 22nd. Happy belated birthday. A rep from Cold Stone will call you on how you can pick up your free Cold Stone Creamery ice cream. Cube. All right, and that's going to do it for us here in the news desk. Stay tuned. Jason's next with Extra. Have a great weekend. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Off and day, everybody, and welcome to KOM News Extra. I'm Jason Salas. In tonight's lineup, we are going to hear from future leaders from the Island Board of Governing Students. Can't wait for that. But first, we are going to find out more about one of the most exciting things happening this year, the Guam Micronesia Island Fair. We've got two members of the family here, of course, from GVB, the ever always knowledgeable and perpetually smiling Josh Tatinko. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> and Not we welcome to Guam a relative, a friend, and now a member of the Guam Micronesia Island Fair, Mario Borja. Uh, thank you for that welcome. Uh -huh. I, I appreciate the uh, hospitality that the island is offering us. Well, yeah, you are part of this community as well, even though you make your residence right now in America's finest city. San Diego. Yep, as is known. But you've got family in uh, Talafofo and Timuni. And Timuni, yes. All and right. all over the other villages as well. Okay, well, excellent. Well, well, relative to the Guam Micronesia Island Fair, you know, I mean, it's such a wonderful event that we can celebrate, you know, the commonalities that we in this part of the world have between our cultures, but then also, you know, the parallels and the differences and everything like that. And you are from Sekman Chamorro, so you're an expert in traditional seafaring ways. Well, I'm a student. Believe okay. me, building a canoe does not make you a sailor, so nor does it make you a navigator, mm -hmm. but um, it helps. Mm -hmm. So I'm a student of uh, sailing, I'm a student of navigation, I'm a student still on many things about canoes. May I ask, just ask Mario, how is you know, traditional seafaring, how is that accepted in San Diego because, because it's a coastal city and because it's set, you know, there, there's, a, there's this shipyard or the Navy yard there and I mean it's, it's such a place that's conducive to water travel and everything like that and then you bring in these traditional techniques. How is the community there embracing it? Well, the Chamorros, they have not seen a sackman. None of them living have encountered such a vessel. Mm -hmm. The last time it sailed was in 1742. None of them living could remember that date back. But uh, the canoe with its presence has really opened the awareness of people of who they are. And many kids who have 
uh, seeing the canoe now or wearing tattoos. So they're, they're finding a reason to belong, mm -hmm. the reason to, to identify with the canoe. And um, that's how the young kids are, are embracing it. Now the adults, they don't, um, they don't recall. All they've learned is the galaydi. Mm -hmm. See, they grew up learning more about the galaydi and, and the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. They didn't learn about the sacrament because that was not within the reach of their lifetime. And I'm sure this gives them a deeper sense of appreciation for their heritage when they say, you know, like, obviously this type of technology goes back, you know, probably like a dozen generations before your time and everything like that. But still, in the modern day, this is who you are. Yes. When they learned that the Sackman was the fastest vessel in the first 18 centuries of, well, since we counted years, they turn out and have a sense of pride and that like they're wearing the ranks of Chamorro on their shoulder, you know, I'm Chamorro. Mm -hmm. And when they see the canoe, they, they, they identify with it. Mm -hmm. And it's a strong bond, although many have not even touched the canoe, they've heard about the canoe, they come, they don't get involved with, with the canoe uh, from the construction side, but its presence is enough mm -hmm. to feel part of it. And that's amazing. Now, Josh, unfortunately, you have to follow that. <laughs> yeah. There's, yeah, there's big shoes to follow. It's hard to follow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely tough act to follow. But um, as far as the mechanics of the Micronesia Island Fair, you guys have like a full slate of activities and also not one but two stages in two different locations this year. That's correct, Jason. Um, you know, my, Guam Micronesia Island Fair is turning 30 this year, so it starts next week from May 2nd to the 6th. Uh, our hours are from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. With the exception of Friday and Saturday, it'll be from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. It's going to be down in our capital city of Agatnya, at Paseo de Susana. Uh, Mario will be there. He has a booth that will, he'll be talking more about our, our history and with the Sacman Chamorro and, and his time and Indeed. all his knowledge. I think that, like right here, you feel his passion with that. And that's what we want to feel. We're welcoming back all the eight de different delegations to Guam, uh, brothers and sisters from uh, different parts of Micronesia. Um, the two stages you mentioned, there's one stage that's dedicated to uh, our, our live local musicians and entertainment, and another stage dedicated to cultural performances and, and our delegations too. So uh, really there's a huge push for uh, local music and regional music.